In this video, I will present a simple and easy to follow explanation of how the iodine clock reaction actually works. So we start with a colorless solution and then all of a sudden without warning, it suddenly turns completely black. This is the iodine clock reaction. And fundamentally, the question is, what is going on here? There's two things fundamentally that we have to explain. Firstly, why does nothing happen for so long and then suddenly you get a color change? And why do you get this color change at all? Explaining why it turns black is fairly simple. You've got some starch and a reaction that produces iodine. And when starch reacts with iodine, that is when you get this color change to black. Just like when you put iodine onto a leaf to test for starch, you get that kind of blue-black color. And that's exactly what you're seeing here. Why does it take so long? Why is there this delay? This is the second part of explaining the iodine clock reaction. And fundamentally, there is multiple reactions going on here. So the main ingredients that you have for the um, iodine clock, or rather one of the variations, is that you have starch, you have sodium thiosulfate, you have hydrogen peroxide, and you have potassium iodide. The first reaction that goes on is very slow. There is a slow reaction occurring between hydrogen peroxide and your potassium iodide, which is broken down into its constituent ions. We're not looking at every single reaction. We're looking at the important ones. So those iodine ions are going to react with the hydrogen peroxide. And you've also got some aqueous H plus ions. And that's going to end up producing simply water. And then you're getting this I2. That's your iodine. And so you would expect that iodine would react with the starch and the solution goes black, but that's not actually what happens because there is another reaction going on here. And this reaction is very fast and it involves this iodine that is produced. So the second this iodine is produced, it immediately ends up reacting with your sodium thiosulfate. And so whenever iodine is produced, it goes into the second reaction and it's essentially mopped up. It's being removed. So it never actually gets the chance to react very much with the, the starch and turn black because it's being mopped up so quickly. This reaction produces some products. And the interesting product is that you're getting those iodine ions. Those iodine ions are, of course, going to go backwards and you're going to end up with those reacting again with some of the hydrogen peroxide. And then the, this is going to keep going and keep going and keep going until eventually all of your sodium thiosulfate is going to be completely consumed. There's none of that left. And well, if there's going to be none of that left, reaction two isn't going to be able to happen. So reaction two is gone. And so what you're doing now is you're producing iodine, but the iodine isn't being mopped up and removed. So your iodine is going to build up. And when that happens, that's when you get reaction three happening. So the starch and the iodine is going to react. And then you're getting the solution turning that black color very suddenly. So when there's no sodium thiosulfate left, reaction two is stopped. It's not being mopped up. And so the starch now reacts with the iodine and it goes black. This is how the iodine clock reaction works. I hope that explanation was helpful to you. If it did help you, please like and subscribe the video so other people can discover it. And finally, thank you very much for watching.